It is the first day of Q4. I hope you had, uh, you're going to have an amazing weekend. It is now October. It's now October. Nine months in the books. What have you done this year so far? Have you accomplished your goals? Have you learned your market? Are you adding skills? Or are you still afraid to do the work? Something we do on this channel is we try to lead by example, show you what daily discipline looks like. As an example, this daily financial news tries to go off at 7.30 every morning. You can go back and look at two, three, three and a half years of daily financial news. Just an example. And Saturdays are very, very special uh, for one rental at a time because it is, it is all for you. We do the daily financial news. Then at 8 a.m., we do 60 minutes live of your questions, my answers. And then at 9 o'clock, we either do a deep dive, like today we were going to do something on probate, or two, we do a 30-minute private discussion in our private Facebook group. So Saturday, really every day is for you, but Saturdays are extra special. Everything is live. Everything is for you. So again, pretty exciting. If you are in the group, what you are going to get on probate today is you're going to get Rylas Dana. He's going to talk about some key terms uh, with probates, things that you may be confused about. Uh, he will define them. Two, he will talk about a real estate or an estate plan for real estate investors. And then finally, how you as an investor could strike up a strategic relationship with probate attorneys for lead flow. And then on top of that, of course, we will take your questions, his answers in real time, and we will go through the list. We will go as long as 90 minutes if we have to. So again, we are giving back. I want to give a shout out to Rylas for doing this for us. And again, don't worry. If you don't have three, 320 bucks, you're not a part of the course. You will get this amazing session tomorrow at 9 a.m. right here on this channel. Hope you appreciate the stuff that we continue to give away. Uh, so let's talk about this. Uh, I don't know if you've heard, but there was all this kerfuffle, at least in my Twitter feed, about a Federal Reserve emergency meeting scheduled for Monday. <clears throat> I want you to hear that again. Emergency Fed meeting scheduled for Monday. Those words don't really go together. So again, could something come out of the Federal Reserve's meeting Monday? Of course. But let's not get it twisted. This is not an emergency meeting. Emergency meetings are not scheduled. They just happen and we hear about them later. This is, this is a little comical to me, and it just shows how some folks take information and spin it up into this big, th something bigger than it is. The Federal Reserve on Monday is holding a regular closed board meeting. These happen four or five times a year between rate cycles or between Fed meetings. So again, Monday's meeting is not unusual. It has happened four or five times today. It is called a regular closed board meeting, if you would like to search it. Again, I'm not telling you that Monday's meeting couldn't cause something, but I'm saying Fed emergency and scheduled don't go hand in hand. So let's, let's not get over anxious just because. That, that really helps no one. So again, Monday's meeting is not an emergency. It's not like things are blowing up. It's not, not that. Again, it's a scheduled meeting, not unusual, four or five already this year. And it wouldn't shock me if they have another one in December. Let's talk about the week ahead. The big number for the week is Friday. On Friday, we will get September jobs creation. We got... And on Thursday, we will get the unemployment data, right? Again, these are unfortunate times. We almost have to root for bad news to slow the Fed down. We have to root for more unemployment to slow the Fed down. 
This is not fun. Nobody wants to do it, but it is where we are. So on Thursday, the unemployment claims. Last week, I think, was 196 sub 2000. There is no chance the Fed pivots in November or December unless that jumps to 300, 350, 400,000 new jobless claims. And in the holiday season, I think that is very unlikely. Two, Friday. Friday jobs creation for the month of September. If we get anything over 150,000, it will be seen as, hey, the job market is still strong. Companies are still hiring. We are still creating jobs. We will keep moving forward. And I believe right now the market agrees with me probably for the first time. I see 75 in December, or I'm sorry, November, 75 in November, and 50 in December. And the good news is I've been calling this for months. You can go back and listen to some of the old videos. The market in general is now in agreement, 75, 50. And I do think we get something early next year. I think the next meeting is in February or something. So again, more rate increases. But again, watch the jobs numbers. If we only got one metric to look at each week, it's probably going to be the Thursday unemployment claims because it is consistent and it is relatively quick, one week durations. On top of that, we have Loretta Mester, vice chair, number two in power on the Federal Reserve. She speaks twice next week. I believe Loretta Mester is the hawk of all hawks. I believe what Loretta Mester is putting out there is, hey, I am here. This is Loretta speaking. I am here to protect the little guy. I don't care about billionaires on CNBC and Bloomberg and Yahoo Finance complaining about the stock market. Loretta Mester, I believe, is out for the little guy, right? The people being decimated by inflation. So she speaks twice. I think her speeches will be market moving. So let's watch for that. Uh, Let's actually bring something else that's not on the board. Congress sucks. Let me explain. One of the things that is bipartisan, Republicans and Democrats agree on in mass, in mass, and the list is short. There are not many things that red and blue Republicans, um, Democrats, liberals, conservative agree on. But one thing they do agree on is Congress should not be able to trade stocks. They have access to uh, information. They can front run stocks. They can make themselves wildly rich. By being public servants, again, we all want them to not have that ability. They were supposed to create and push something through. They did not because they are more interested in their pocketbooks than doing what is right, in my opinion. Why would they? Why would, they, why would you kill the golden goose? You got all this information, front run stocks, no harm, no foul. Maybe you get a fine, no big deal. This is very, very, very true of just politicians. It is unfortunate. It is why I think we need term limits. It is why uh, it's just a toxic mess sometimes. Two options. As we sit here today, right, we don't have a time machine. We don't have a DeLorean. We can't go back to the future or whatever you want to call that. We need to understand, do we really only have two options? Is one option, the Fed raises rate, crashes the economy, kills demand, causes unemployment to spike, causes the recession to bring down inflation? And is the other option only inflation becomes entrenched and all hell breaks loose and the dollar eventually blows up? That kind of feels like where we are, right? We're standing at a fork in the road, given all the mistakes, and the mistakes are long and plentiful. Too low, too long, free money, asset bubbles, all that stuff. I think Jerome Powell actually says that that's what I that's where he thinks we are. And he is not gonna pick 
let inflation run rampant. So we are going down this other path. I do think that's what he is saying. Uh, California. If you live in the great state of California, like I do, uh, our king is going to be sending some stimulus checks up to $1,050 per family. Again, I believe this stimulus check, if memory serves, is to help with gas prices. Uh, The checks are supposed to come out in October. Just in time for Christmas, holiday season, the state of California is going to give you an extra 1000 bucks to fill up your tank if you don't need it. It's a thousand bucks to go Christmas shopping. Maybe help uh, retailers like Target and Walmart blow through that inventory. I think it's $10 billion. $10 billion California is sending out uh, to help with gas prices. Fed, there's been some talk. Uh, Danielle DiMartino Booth, an excellent watch. Uh, she is very, very knowledgeable. I love when she gets on there and, and talks about the economy and the Fed. She is out there basically saying, and I agree with, the Fed is driving with a rear view mirror. What does that mean? Basically, the Fed is operating on forward guidance, forward expectations by looking at the past. For example, just yesterday, You and I were talking about PCE, a.k.a. inflation, running hotter than expected. Folks, it is October 1st, and that was August data. You would think in a connected society with technology, the Fed could be operating on data sets that are less than a month, a month and a half old. But it is where we are. This should be something we fix going into the future. We should be operating on more up-to-date and if not real-time, at least real current, not six weeks old. I think Danielle DiMartino Booth, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, is absolutely right. The Fed is and frankly has always been. This is not, this is not Jerome Powell. This is all Fed presidents from Jerome Powell backwards. They've all been doing it. This is not unique to Powell. I know there's a lot of people that just want to point at Jerome and basically say, Jerome, you suck. At this this point, it's all of them. They've all been operating the same way. The Fed meetings every six weeks, they've been doing this for decades and decades. (coughs) Excuse me. Oh, I want to call out a specific video that I believe went live yesterday at five o'clock. One of my students, Sean, created a great visual, a draft to how to learn your market. Sean went through four steps, how to learn your market in a great visual. We talked about it. We're tweaking it to make it better. In addition to giving you the four steps, how to learn your market. We actually had Sean pull up his spreadsheet and talk about how he is learning his market. If you ever want to get just a taste of what is in my course, how to get started one rental at a time, watch that video. And frankly, if you don't have 320 bucks, I get it. There's enough in that 20 minute video to get you started for free. Take a look. Sean, thank you very much for bringing that to me. Thank you for allowing me to share it with the audience. I look forward to your revisions. It is very, very cool. Uh, And we've already talked about uh, probate. So let me see what else I have in my um, list. Oh, the All In Podcast. Shout out the uh, besties. Uh, I I listened to their podcast. It came out yesterday evening. I've already consumed it. One fact that I thought was interesting is apparently baby boomers. This is their stat, not mine. I haven't researched it or verified. I trust what they put out. Baby boomers own $76 trillion in assets, roughly one-seventh of worldwide wealth. If you average it out, roughly baby boomers are roughly worth $1.1 billion or million, ugh, billion, $1.1 million each. That is a wild stat to think about. Then on the All In podcast, Chamath was talking about 
the market being a forward-looking indicator and starting to nibble in the stock market. Thought that was interesting. Again, I think what the market is pricing in is a 75 in November, a 50 uh, in December. I personally do not believe the market is pricing in earnings cut yet. I believe Wall Street is blind or naive or both to just how bad earnings announcements are going to be. Just think about Nike's earnings, Micron's earnings, and their guidance. I think I think this next quarter, this is a quarter in the accounting world. Let me just tell you what, if I was a, an executive like I was, uh, what, five years ago, what this quarter would be for me is what we would call in the industry the kitchen sink quarter. What is a kitchen sink quarter? This is the quarter you put all the bad news in. All of it. If you bought a company for a hundred billion dollars and it, you know, it's not performing, and you want to write off uh, goodwill, write it off. If you want to do this or that, write it off. This could be the quarter where all publicly traded companies take all the bad news, slam it into one quarter, take the hit, so they can build for the future. This is the quarter that I would make my kitchen sink quarter. We'll see how many do. Uh, I believe it's going to be more than 10 or 20%. It's just the right. If you are an executive at a company and you have the opportunity to slam a quarter with negative information, negative financials, and not take a huge hit because everybody else is doing it, you are wrong if you don't do it. So, end of the day. Uh, let's congratulate a couple of people for doing the work. I'm holding them in my hands. Eric, congratulations for getting your deal done. Your card will go out in the mail today. And Andrew, congratulations on getting your deal done. Your cards will go out. Folks, if you don't, don't know what these are, this is something I use to track my impact. If you do the work and you get a deal done, you buy a house, an investment, whatever it is, I want to know about it. I want to send you one of these to congratulate you for doing the work. It says, congratulations. One of 500, you did it. I am so happy for you. So get your card, do the work, focus. We are in the soup, right? Six months of pain. Get your shopping list ready. Ignore, get rid of the fear. Do the work, do the work, do the work. All right, take care. We will go live in a few minutes for live Q&A. Bye-bye.